Hello everyone and welcome to today's video where today we are back in the world of Australagasta with Dr. Foreman and his patient querent, Avis. They're having an affair. Um, but they're not saying that entirely. But uh, yeah, they just finished their appointment here, so let's just see how it goes. Po Coitus post consultatio. I can't even say it. Consultatio. They did it in the office. Where we go. Let's see what the stars say about today's patients. Last even, twas like a dream. Never in my life have I felt so. Oh, my sweet Avis, tis true you are married, but surely a love as great as ours can transcend such earthly impediments. Dare I hope for? <sighs> Nay, tis most unlikely. Or is it? Forsooth, there be no harm in asking the stars. Might Avis Allen one day be mine? Hello, let's have a look. Option A. Lie with her family. Hmm. Avis has betrayed her marriage vows. The damage this has wrought upon her marriage cannot be undone, and her past cannot be erased. I may be optimistic Mr. Allen will suffer from Ill, or Ill luck and die. Avis will be free to marry me. That's option C. I'm not seeing this clearly. If I knew the truth about our relationship, I would presently be seething with jealousy. Avis is kindly hiding a secret from me. Interesting choice. Interesting. Um, shall we be optimistic? Yeah, let's, let's hope he dies. <laughs> Why not? It says, Avis is one day to be widowed, which will, of course, be very tragical. But after the grieving is done, we will marry. She will be Mistress Foreman. Mistress Avis Foreman. Can I give myself a letter of it? No. Oh, hello. Thomas Blake. What's he been up to? That implies he's been doing something you shouldn't be. Let's find out. Good day, Dean Blag. Fare you well? Most well. Most well indeed. And I will tell you why. The conquering cherub has lately returned home to England. Ah, this being the voyage you did invest in. Aye, and what a sound investment it was. For it has paid off most handsomely. The cherub's cargo of nutmeg and pepper will fetch a high price indeed. Forsooth, my earnings have enabled me to make a substantial investment in Sir Walter Raleigh's expedition to the New World. Oh, ah, fancy. Methinks I've heard of this. Tis a quest to find the fabled lost city of gold, is it not? Or as the Spanish call it, El Dorado? The very same. For it is said that El Dorado does lie deep within the rainforests of the southern parts of the New World. Hiding vast quantities of gold and precious jewels. Hence, what I would have you tell me is, exactly how rich can I expect to be made from my investment? I see. Mm. For if I am to be made very rich, I am afeard that news of my fabulous wealth may cause some jealousy among the clergy. News travels fast around the diocese, and I think it wise to get ahead of it if I can. Then let us consult the stars. 
What will become of Thomas Blagg's investment in Sir Walter Raleigh's quest to find El Dorado? It doesn't go well. <laughs> I know I know how it went in history. He didn't find it, obviously, but will bring him unhappiness, yeah. Uh it's just violence. Encounter foreigners who are stubborn, confident, led by instinct. Represents confidence, represents intuition, stubbornness. All right, what's B? Pessimism and surprising reversal to save the lives of children. What? Hmm. Not sure about that one. God rewards exploration. Blag will be able to leave his children and the legacy of fine things. It's the. It's not either of those it's that one it all goes horribly wrong i have ill tidings for you dean blag rally and his men have been set upon by a tribe of angry new world natives angry natives but but surely the natives would greet us with much rejoicing for do we not bring with us the gift of civilization would they not crave freedom from their tyrannical chieftains and cruel pagan gods well, it would seem these particular natives cannot be reasoned with, as they are led by instinct alone, and they will fight to the last man, as it is not in their nature to surrender with honour, as Christian men would. Truly? But, uh... Alas, I am afeard that Raleigh shall be forced to abandon his search for El Dorado, and your investment will come to naught. Hmm. I must own, sir, that I cannot share your uncharitable view of these savages. Uh, they may be heathens, but are they not still God's children? Um... I will now take my leave that you may engage in quiet reflection upon the spiritual dimensions of this question. He wasn't happy with that. Oh, nothing. Not making any progress with this fella. I don't think he's actually Italian. I think he's been sent by the doctors to prove that I'm not doing real medicine. That's what I think. Good morrow, sir, and well met. Indeed, it is I, Riccardo Ferraro, come once again to the great dottore Simon Forman. Aye, and I can see why you are come. Methinks you are not well, signor. The colour of your face is quite alarming. Eh, uh, it is because I am losing the blood. The blood does drain away from my face, away, way down my body, and out of my... Uh... You are bleeding from your fundament. <laughs> fundament. How much have you been bleeding, and for how long? Un poco, not too much. It does come and go. Sometimes blood, sometimes no blood. You stop the blood, see? Uh, mayhap I will, uh, but first I must consult the stars to find a diagnosis. What ails Signor Ricardo Ferraro? Fundament. <laughs> ah, Scorpio, what's this one? Hemorrhoids, which are swelling in the anus, erectum, blind hemorrhoid, cause pain, etc. Jaundice. A blockage of Ferrari's neck has caused colon child. Hmm. Let's go with that one. We'll go with hemorrhoids. There is nothing here to worry about, Signor Ferraro. Your body is merely purging itself of corrupted blood, in a similar manner to that which does occur in a woman's nethers each month. To wit, tis most healthsome and natural. Hmm. Are you sure? Are you sure? That is your final answer? Indeed it is. I do assure you, Signor, tis the very latest medical thinking on the subject of hemorrhoids. Now, you are welcome to procure a second opinion, but I warrant you will find that most doctors in London will tell you the same. Hmm. 
Then Ricardo Ferraro bids you good day, oh. Signor Foreman. Oh. Uh, we're getting there slowly, but we're getting there. Oh, Amelia again. Okay. Did you see that? Uh, see what, madam? Your querent, Signor Ferraro, scuttling away from me like a frightened rabbit. What have I ever done to upset the man? All I did was wish him buongiorno as I passed him at the door. Verily, Signor Ferraro's behaviour does sound full strange. But let us not think of him, but of the matter that brings you hither, Mistress Lanier. How do you fare? I fare most well, in the main. For you spoke true when you said my collaboration with Mr. S would be fruitful. Ah, good. It's going exceeding well. Hey, got more points. I would be right content with my lot at present if it were not for the trouble I am come about this day. Pray, tell me of this trouble, madam. I am being prowled. Oftentimes in the night I see him following me home. One time methinks I even caught him looking at me through my window. Oh. I would have you tell me who this prowling man might be. A prowler? How very worrisome. Can you describe this man to me? Nay, for it is always at night that I spy him, and I have always been too frighted for my eyes to linger upon him very long. Then let us see what light the stars can shed upon the identity of this man who hides himself in darkness. Who is the man prowling Mistress Lanier? All right, it's option A. Apparently it is a violent husband. Carla hopes for a reversal of the ill luck he has had with Mistress Lania. He harbours a misguided hope that she will perform her wifely duties and resume intimate relations with him. So the husband. Alright, okay. B. Is suffering mental confusion owing to her religious belief. She also harbours an unjustified level of mistrust towards perspective romantic partners. Carla harbours undeclared feelings for Mistress Lania. The man of authority and a master of wit. Hmm, go with that one. The star suggests that your prowler is a man with a talent for wit. A man who secretly harbours amorous feelings towards you. Uh, does that sound like anyone you know, madam? Dr Foreman, I find your question most... illogical. I cannot know of a man who harbours secret feelings for me, for indeed, if I were to know of them... The feelings would not be secret. Uh, yes, well, let me put it another way. Your friend, Mr. S, is the keen-witted man who furtively admires you. He is your prowler, madam. Mr. S is my prowler, you say? I bid you, sir, check the stars again. Is it not the most likely explanation, though, madam? I assure you there is nothing likely about the unique relationship betwixt me and Mr. S. Indeed, he has too much respect for my literary mind to use me so ill. For his is a noble intellect that allows him to soar above the baser instincts of lesser men. Now, if you will not judge the stars again for me, I will bid you good day, Dr. Foreman. I think I will. <laughs> oh no, we've lost points. Hear ye, hear ye! Sir Walter Raleigh fails to find legendary Treasure City. Rumours say next Raleigh voyage is to Pot of Gold <laughs> in the rainbow! Hear ye! Reports have lately covered that Sir Walter Raleigh's expedition in New World is such El Dorado's, but a colossal cluster fail. Despite Raleigh's assurance to the Queen that he would return with gold raided from legendary city, it's said that Raleigh's ships bring back naught but potatoes! Experts predict Her Majesty's reaction to be somewhat testy. I bet. Especially when the ball of wealth 
<laughs> this is gold digger. Lovely. Let's Good go. Good day to you, Mistress Sharp. Good day, Dr. Foreman. But I am Mistress Delamere now. Oh. Mistress Delamere? Uh, but as I recall from my case notes... Uh, let me see now. T'was three years past. Aye, uh, were you not hoping to marry a man named George Middleton? Oh, yes. I did marry Mr. Middleton. There but we go. not long after we were wed, he fell to his death whilst taking the air atop a church belfry, struck down by his <gasps> abiding love of late Gothic architecture. <laughs> There, there, my dear lady. How distressing your late husband's death must have been for you. I indeed, Dr. Foreman, so much so that my friends urged me to marry again, lest I die of grief. But now that I am once more a wife, I would not wish to be widowed anew. And John, John Delamere, my present husband, is also an older man. Of course he is. Dr. Foreman, you must tell me whether there be any illness he has, whether there be anything I might do to save my dear sweet husband from an early death. Then let us see what the stars have to say. Is Mr. John Delamere troubled with any condition that may cause him to die? Let's find out. Alright, Leo. John Delamere does suffer from a cardiac passion. Suggests a condition cannot be cured. Hmm. Taurus... Oh, Aries, sorry. Uh, it's been bewitched. I don't think he's been bewitched. Although, she may be the witch. <laughs> it's just witchcraft, it's just a possibility of death. I think it'll be that one, because I think she's killing them. Mr. Stelamir, the news is very grave. The stars tell of your husband being under the spell of a witch. Know you of a woman in your husband's circle suspected of being a witch? A disgruntled sister left penniless by feudal inheritance laws, perchance? Mayhap a local cat enthusiast or a Scottish neighbour? <laughs> Nay, Scottish uh, neighbor. as true as I live, sir, I do not. Uh, but, <laughs> but I will be sure to make inquiries. Good day, Dr. Foreman. I don't think she was pleased with that. Robert Hill, yeah. No, no! We're never gonna get our letters! Sibyl's a fine host, of this she will oft boast. She loves to entertain, she loves to entertain. Though hard she does try, her dinners go awry. And even tears and shades and shades and shades. What's she done this time? Good morrow, Mistress Fortescue. How may I help you this day? I did lately experience feelings of a most strange and disturbing nature, for which I desire an explanation. I see. Prithee, describe these feelings to me, madam. When did they occur? Last eve, at a dinner party hosted by my dear friend, Mistress Emma Delamere. All was well at first, but soon after my arrival, I was stricken with a kind of madness. Wait. Madness, you say? Emma Dunnamere was yes. the last patient. Moments during which I found myself overcome with feelings of mirth, laughing most immoderately at the dullest of remarks made by other guests. At other times, I felt an unnatural fascination with the shape of the candelabra in the table centrepiece. And all the while, I was so ravenous with hunger, I quite absent-mindedly ate all the sweetmeats at my end of the table. I fear my rapaciousness did not escape the notice of guests seated beside me. Such an immoderate appetite is out of character for you, I take it. Shut the munchies. It could not have merely been occasioned by anxious passions? Why, nay, Dr. Foreman. Forsooth, I ought to have been very calm last eve, for I did spend the afternoon inhaling the fumes of an aromatic oil, a gift from my sweet husband sent back from his explorations in the Near East. I did mention my husband, Captain Henry Fortescue, before, I think. He is a great friend of Why Sir Walter got a Raleigh. Oh, Henry and Sir Walter find the oil most relaxing, so he tells me. Yet you were not so very relaxed last eve, I take it? No, not in the least. For I fear a capricious spell was cast upon me. Over the course of the evening, I developed the strongest intuition that malignant forces were present in the room <laughs> and that I had been bewitched. Could it be true, Dr. Foreman? Might a witch have cast a spell on me? That is something we shall have to ask the stars, madam. Let us see. What was it that afflicted Mistress Sybil Fortescue last eve at dinner? She got high as a kite. 
According to his trouble with melancholy, a condition characterized by lethargy, anxiety, and sadness. Nope. Uh, no, you've not been bewitched. Smoke inhalation. Altered mental state. It's exactly what happened. Now, madam, the oil your husband sent you. This was the first time you did inhale its fumes, methinks? Yes, the shipment of gifts from my husband did only lately arrive. Ah, then I think we have your answer. I have read some interesting tales of such oils and herbs of the Near East. Tis said they occasion certain temperaments. To wit, an excessive sanguinity, which will of course the immoderate laughter and increased appetite. They can also provoke a narrowing of the mind, which would explain your temporary fascination with the candelabra, and I believe the fumes of this oil may also have been responsible for the notion that you have been bewitched. And the men of the Near East gain pleasure from this oil? They would render themselves foolish on purpose. Aye, indeed. Foreigners have many strange customs and desires that we cannot hope to understand. How fascinating! I thank you for this explanation, sir. Indeed, it will make for a most diverting tale with which to regale guests at my next dinner. God give you good morrow, Dr. Foreman. I'm well. And once again, we are going to leave that there. So thank you very much for watching this episode of Astrologaster with me, with Dr. Foreman and his Heisekai patient there. Uh, well, I will continue this another time. So thank you very much for watching. My name is Mr. Briar, otherwise known as Briar, and I will see you in the next video.